Welcome to the second session of the Inverted Series. What we're doing is we're looking how uh, God's perspective sometimes is upside down. Sometimes it feels like it goes counter to our logic, but we understand that God's purpose, His, his direction is um, really the true one. We are the one that is truly inverted. Uh, we looked last week at John the Baptist and how um, it, he was the crazy dude. There, there's no way, like, why would God choose this, this crazy cousin of Jesus to be the one that um, prepares the way for Jesus? And we saw how his life, how he saw it in the same perspective that God saw it. That John the Baptist saw it as his life, that he should become less and that Christ should become greater. And we looked at how we aren't really the main character of our story. In fact, Christ should be the main character of our story. That that we should be pointing people to Christ in when we are doing whatever we're doing, right? We need to glorify God. We need to point anybody to Christ. We need to prepare the way to Christ. We need to be less so that he can become greater. Today we're going to look at the call, the inverted call, right? And and what that means is is we're going to look at why the disciples or or what was it that that Jesus called them to do. We're going to look at how it makes no sense for us if we're to look at it um, and and to just kind of judge how Jesus chose people. It just doesn't make any sense. And we're going to hopefully then look at our call that God has placed on our life. First off, this idea of call, um, it gets thrown around a lot, right? You hear people say, I have a call to ministry, or I have a call to this, I have a call to that. Um, that God's calling on my life, right? Um, and, and that is great, that is awesome, and it's, it's a biblical idea and concept. But but honestly, I think we, we knowing, you know, this telephone telephone or cell phones um, knowing that we think of that as how God calls us right when in reality this idea of calling um, Jesus calling his disciples it isn't like he picked up a, a telephone or a cell phone or anything right it is instead he 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 called out to them right he he called them in to follow him you know it's more of like shouting across a group and saying, hey, over there, right? That is more of a calling that we're seeing, right? And, and I was hunting a couple weeks ago and uh, fall turkey hunting. And uh, fall turkey hunting is, is basically random luck, right? You just kind of have to know where the turkey are and place yourself there and they come across you. But in spring, what you do is you call them in, because they are uh, in the time of, of mating that um, this calling uh, them in to, to get them, you know, to get them is, is you're using something to attract them. You're using something that they're interested in to attract them. And so, so hunters have developed, um, you know, this call here. This is called a turkey call. And, and what this turkey call is, is you put it in your mouth and then you call the turkey. You make turkey noises like you are attracting turkeys. It sounds like a turkey. What you're doing is you are calling the turkey in. You may sound like a, a, a hen turkey calling a, a tom turkey in for mating, or you may sound like a rival tom turkey that is invading the territory. And so what you're doing is you're bringing them in, you're calling them in. And we can see that is, is what Christ did was when he called the disciples, he used what they knew and what they understood. He used their language. He, he talked to them in the way that they could understand. So to the fishermen, like we, we see this in, in Matthew 4, verse 18, it says, As Jesus was bes- walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers. Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net onto the lake, uh, for they were fishermen. They're just doing their job, right? He says, come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. 
Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat, and their father Zebedee preparing their nets. Jesus called to them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. So what he did was he called to them. He, he called them and said, hey, I have a plan for you to be more significant. I have something more of a purpose for your life. And he used the language that they understood. He said, I will make you a fisher of men. And so that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, why would I be a fisherman? But he's, he's talking to them in their language and using their skills to call them into ministry. Now, it is completely topsy-turvy, upside down of who he called. Because honestly, um, if you are to call the best of the best, if I was to assemble the best team, who I would have picked was, was someone of social status, someone who, um, you know, had uh, maybe a doctor or, or someone in the priestly line, right? And I would choose them to be of you know, a disciple, someone who was already training maybe and bring them alongside. Um, but instead, Jesus picks the tradesmen. He picks a fisherman. He picks tax collectors. He picks a zealot. He picks people that are not who you or I would pick, right? He just picks a normal people, right? A normal, average John, an average Simon. He changes his name to Peter, right? You know, he just picks the average guy. Now, I'm not a great carpenter by any means, and I'm in, in the middle of of, of building um, a bed frame for our house, but um, you know, it's it, to me, I've always respected those in the trade, um, in various trades, that they can build a project and they can accomplish something. And, and what Jesus said to these fishermen is he used their language and he said, I'll make you fisher of men. And, and he brought them along in their life, right? And he used those um, building things in their lives of, of, of this is a hard worker that is going to see the kingdom come through. And, and that is evident through then the book of Acts, right? When, when the disciples become apostles and they're sent out, they are going from town to town proclaiming the gospel. They are truly fishing for men. Now, how he called was absolutely um, what was upside down. Is, is he went into the life, he was walking around. He wasn't like a priest getting his, his disciples. He was walking the Sea of Galilee and he saw these two guys. And he called out to them, used their passions and said, hey, come and join me, right? And I think often we get mixed up. We get caught in this of, of thinking that, you know, maybe our passions, maybe our gifting isn't in ministry or, or anything like that, and we feel less called. But what God is doing is he has put a calling on each one of your lives, each one of your hearts. He's given you passions, he's given you gifts, and, and what he's doing is he's saying, hey, you need to use those gifts for the kingdom. And so that's when we get truly an understanding of how we should walk as Christians, right? We should live as if our gifts, as our passions, should be used for the gospel, for the kingdom, right? So if, if your desire is to be a YouTube star, do it for Christ. If your desire is to, to be a doctor, do it for, for the sake of Christ. Be that healing hand. Show the love that God has for people. If it's your desire for justice and you want to be a lawyer, do it and pursue it and do it for the sake of the gospel. If you want to be a graphic designer, make beautiful art that glorifies God. See, God is calling you out of your passions and out of your gifting for the sake of the gospel. Now, it's your job to kind of understand how that goes, right? It's your job to, to pray and to ask God to open your eyes to how your gifts, how your passions can be used for the sake of the gospel. Now, besides working with students and working with youth, you guys know my passions for board games, for video games, and all that kind of stuff. And, and those are things that I use to build relationships and connect with people for the sake of the gospel. 
You know, I'm not just playing board games or, or video games or a sake for my own entertainment, although that is part of it. I want to see the gospel move forward. So I'm committing to try to find avenues and, and ways that God could use my passions for the sake of the gospel. And I want to challenge you this week is to pray this week for the same thing. God, open my eyes to my passions. How can you use my passions for your kingdom? And you just give that to him. Give that to him of, of whether, whatever it is, give him your passions, your gifting for the sake of the kingdom. So next week in Inverted Series, we are going to talk about Paul. We're going to talk about how his life was turned, up, turned upside down and how our lives should be turned upside down as well.